This is our Raymarine Dragonfly 7 Pro Sonar GPS chart plotter unit. Uh, it comes with Navionics Plus North America charts. Uh, we decided to get a chart plotter because after using our cell phones and tablets for navigation, it, it just sucked. The screen brightness wasn't there. In the sunlight, you couldn't see it. I actually had to take my sunglasses off to be able to see the screen, which is not something you necessarily want to be doing. Uh, the battery life was awful. We'd get through half a day and I'd need to charge my phone or tablet or what have you. Your phone you, or tablet, you probably don't want those laying out in the uh, in the sun all day or if it rains or whatnot, that's, that's not going to be good. So I decided to go with a chart plotter. We got the Dragonfly 7 Pro. In the world of chart plotters, there's a, a few options you have. You can get a, an MFD unit, a, a multifunction display, uh, so it'll do GPS and, and chart plotting and, and all that good stuff, but they cost a lot. Uh, and then on the lower end, you have fish finders slash chart plotters, which is basically just a glorified fish finder. The GPS, MFD style GPF chart plotter units have a bigger screen. But like we said, they cost more. The fish finder ones generally are smaller screen, but they're also smaller in price. It seems like the charts are add-ons, basically, to a, a fish finder unit. The lower end units are geared towards fishermen uh, that also need a map. We got the Dragonfly 7 Pro because of the screen size. Uh, we could not find a non-pro version of the 7 inch Dragonfly. The pro version cost as much as a lot of the high end 5 inch units from other brands. It ended up costing us less to have a bigger screen here and that was one of our one of our requirements. This comes with a transducer. We don't need it. We probably will use it. It's not a through hole. It connects to the transom. I don't plan on doing that. I plan on doing the old uh, toilet wax ring. See if we can make that work but worst case scenario transducer doesn't work but I don't need it anyway. This version comes with Navionics Plus North America like I said and we went with that because that's what we've been using on our devices and we like it it covers the lake that we sail on very well and it gets updated it has community edits so users can report things and they instantly show up on the chart and with the dragonfly 7 pro version it has wi-fi so you can sync your plotter with your cell phone or your tablet or wherever you have the app so in other words you can set up charts and all that good stuff and then transfer it to the unit over Wi-Fi. That will make things quick and easy. This chart plotter was $549 at Raymarine, $500 at West Marine. Uh, they had them on Amazon for $519, but after a little bit of digging, I was able to find it at my new favorite Marine store, Anchor Express, for $444, and that's with the Navionics Plus. The Navionics Plus by itself is $149. So we ended up saving a little over $100 from full retail by going to Anchor Express. We've bought other stuff from Anchor Express. Uh, I really like them. They generally have the best prices that I can find on just about everything. Shipping's fast. Highly recommend them. So let's have a look in here. Get a user manual. This will be our, our maiden look at the unit. It, seems, it feels pretty heavy. That's my initial reaction is that's heavy. Connector on the back, plotter card goes there, or map card rather. It's got a, a little cover here where you can pop that off and screw in a, uh, a mounting ball or a mounting bracket of some sort. There's another one down here. This is where your cable locks in, turns, locks. Uh, it feels substantial and it feels like it would stand up to the weather pretty good. The buttons feel responsive. The uh, Navionics Plus card, very important, don't lose that. Uh, looks like this is the transducer. This is the part that I was talking about. I would use a, a wax toilet ring. Basically, you, you sort of heat up the toilet ring and you make a bed of toilet ring wax. And then you basically push this down into the wax, flush with the, uh, or pretty close to flush, with the, uh, the bottom of your hull. And it shoots the beam right through there. Uh, a lot of people had success with that. Toilet ring costs a dollar better than drilling holes in your boat. One of the problems we're going to have is we're going to be putting this through a 1 and 1 8 inch Edson pedestal guard. And from what I gather, this is 3 quarters of an inch, so we'll have to drill a hole into that. We, we, are, we actually already have a hole in the Edson pedestal guard, and hopefully we can push this down through there. Where the bottom of the guard meets the cockpit floor, we'll have to drill a hole. And from what I gather, you're supposed to drill a bigger hole, fill it in with epoxy, and then drill a smaller hole so it's all watertight. Let's cross that bridge when we come to it. That may be another video, uh, maybe not. 
maybe the same one depending on how it all goes. Other little doodads here. Looks like mounting mounting bracket. Yeah. Yeah, here's the, the ball piece I was talking about. It comes with a it comes with equipment to mount it basically on a dashboard, I suppose, of a boat. We're not gonna be doing that. Like I said, we're going to be clamping it onto the side of our Ed Edson. Originally, we were gonna go with a nav pod, but we already have a nav pod, so we would have to add another nav pod. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but just not something I really would like to do at this point in time, because we may end up moving our existing nav pod to a different spot. So that's basically it. Mounting equipment, uh, chart plotter, transducer. I think that's pretty much all there is to to this kit. So I guess the next step would be to hook it up. I have a, a 12 volt AC power supply converter to convert to a 12 volt DC. So hopefully we can get that going in a few minutes and uh, we'll see what happens. In terms of mounting this unit, I got a RAM mount. Uh, it's actually two RAM mounts. Well, technically it's three pieces. I got this RAM mount rubber, one inch rubber ball. It screws into the back of the water, uh, either here or here. And then this piece clamps on here, clamps down. And then this piece will clamp around our pedestal guard. So we'll spin that out, clamp it on the guard. This piece goes here, this piece goes here. Tighten this down. And we can rotate this at any angle at that point in time. Now we want this to go at, this guy to go at 90. This will be screwed in here. So it'll hang on our, our pedals to guard like that, basically. We do already have that hole there. We should be able to just mount this. And then, you know, whenever we're ready to leave the boat, we will just unplug the wire uh, and unclamp this and put the whole thing inside the boat or take it home with us or, or whatever So I don't think we'll have any problems there. So the next thing to do would be to To power it up and uh, see make sure that she works before we take her out there. Okay. This is clearly less than an ideal uh, Configuration here with the uh, 12 volt power supply on my dining room table, but That's what we're having to deal with right for right now. So power supplies on uh, I'm Guessing I just hold this down Power's up, so that's a that's a step in the right direction. Okay, and then a little blinky up in the top left-hand corner, and then it goes back to that, and then it just sort of seems to sit there indefinitely. Okay, so after it sat there for a little while, it, it came up with this warning. Limitations on use, it's basically kind of like the one in your car. Don't put your laugh in this thing's hands. If you think you're going to do something bad, don't go there. Push OK. It already knows where I'm at. Setup wizard, OK. It, it looks like it's working. The screen is really bright. That's good. All the buttons seem to work. Seems to be functional. So at this point, ready to go out to the boat and install it. Cool.